Fractal recently launched its torrent case, which did really well in our review, but it had an immediate problem, which was this. This is the fan hub. Fractal had an issue much like NZXT's with the H1, where the early fan hub had a short circuit risk, which Fractal at the time described to us as a hazard in its email, and we would agree, because short circuits are what causes fires and things like the NZXT H1. Fractal took a lot of steps to remedy this issue. It's, it's almost like they saw what happened to NZXT and Gigabyte uh, and then decided to not have a product that could catch on fire, and so they tried to start fixing it. And now we have the updated version of the fan hub. We're going to look at the old one and show you what the problem was now that we understand it. We'll look at the new one. We'll go over the changes. And we even have the PCB design file from Fractal. They were very open through this whole process and wanted to walk us through all the changes that they were making and all of the research they were doing to try and diagnose the problem. So let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. We use Squarespace for our own GN store and juggle complex multi-piece orders all the time with it. Squarespace makes it fast for us to roll out new products with detailed pages full of galleries, videos, and descriptors. It's also useful for your own resume sites, for photographer or project portfolios, or for starting your new small business idea. There's never been a better time to try and start your new business than right now. And we can vouch that Squarespace makes it easy. Visit squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So we'll start here. This is the old fan hub. This came in from a viewer, and it has some of the damage that Fractal was talking about on it. So we, uh, we had this shipped to us so we could try and diagnose it. The unit we had in our review was not damaged. It didn't have any issues. So that's why we reached out to the community and we were able to source one that did. We have two new ones here. This is an engineering sample from Fractal. They sent us to this earlier on, and then we decided to wait to do anything with the video until they had the production ready sample, which is this one. So they are visually different, and we'll talk about that today. They are also, in a sense, functionally different, although they are intended to do the same thing in the case. But let's talk about how Fractal handled the issue to begin with. So Fractal, as a reminder, we already talked about this in a separate video. I'm not going to go through the whole thing here. Uh, we'll link it below if you care. But Fractal reached out to us before we ever became aware of the issue. The issue, again, to be very clear, is that there is potential if, uh, especially during assembly at the factory, there's a, a scratch on the surface of the PCB or something, there's potential for a short of 12 volts to ground. And a short of 12 volts to ground, ground here would be the case via the screw going through the screw hole. So it's basically exactly the NZXT H1 issue. The NZXT H1, as you might remember, spectacularly caught fire in our testing. And uh, Fractal being aware of this and maybe also having morals and ethics, although not required uh, <laughs> to do a fix, maybe decided to get ahead of things. So they reached out to us very early. We did the news video about it and talked about how Fractal did a formal uh, recall through all of its retailers, through its customers, everyone I could get in touch with. So Fractal, I think, pulled back something like 487 cases, something like that, and worked on replacing the fan hubs themselves rather than waiting for them to sell to the end user and then shipping the replacement to the end user if they can ever find them. So this is the right move, is to pull it back themselves, fix it themselves. Uh, and now it's ready to start shipping things again with the updates. So that's what we're looking at. That's kind of the, the recap of what happened. And if you want the new fan hub and you happen to get the torrent, although I don't think many people did because of how quickly Fractal reacted, uh, then we'll have some links below for how you can get the new fan hub. So let's start by identifying the problem. The problem is uh, it's right there. That piece of copper there, that exposed part of the power plane, that's the problem because when you put a screw through this hole and the top of the screw contacts that and the rest of the screw contacts the case back here somewhere, that's your short. So that is the issue that can cause a fire. Fractal, of course, pointed out that in theory, your power supply should protect you from this with short circuit protection, but you can still have long-term issues. Uh, if users ignore it and keep trying to turn it on, that's a problem. If you have a bad power supply, that's a problem. So the right move was to fix this regardless of what protections should do because the the goal is to not use them <laughs> rather than hope they work. So the issue is the PCB gets mounted to the side of the chassis. We'll show some footage of the how it actually installs at some point, but it mounts something like this. And when factory workers are installing it, because uh, it can be misaligned, there's an issue where inserting a screw with a drill, especially if the PCB is already scratched, 
can result in this issue, even if you as the end user never take this out, never work with it, never modify it. So this can happen out of the factory. That's point number one. As of August 31st, Fractal detected eight failures out of 479 that had checked at the time, is replacing all of them. Uh, the through holes in this, if you look at these, are also much like the NDXT ones where, this one might be an easier example to see, they are drilled through without any, it's not a plated through hole, there's no plating in there, and it's just drilled straight through, whereas if you look at the new one, big difference. A nicely plated through hole, there's actually a lot more clearance as well between the hole here for the screw and the connectors for the fan, where this was a concern we had with this one, where uh, as you potentially scratch or wear away the surface here, you are getting awfully close to an actual uh, active fan header. So to recap the main things with the old design, it's a two-sided PCB, one layer is conductive on each side. The entire front side, except for the isolated PWM traces, is a 12-volt plane. The entire rear side, except for the isolated tachometer traces, is a ground plane. That's not a problem. The through holes are drilled directly through the 12-volt plane without any clearance. If the protective lacquer coating is damaged around those screw holes, the 12-volt plane shorts into the case or ground as we described, and this would most likely trigger those power supply protections. But again, as Fractal said in its uh, email, quote, this can lead to issues that are harder to detect, including slowly melting cable insulation. So here's the new ones. From what we can tell, these should be the same. We looked at them both and they appear to be identical. Technically, this one was from engineering, so we're gonna set this one aside because uh, technically that was before they started shipping these replacements. So the new one, uh, the differences are mostly obvious, but there's a bit of a height difference, about 1.5 millimeter increase in PCB height, and that allows it to gain that extra space we talked about between the screw heads and the nearby soldering points. The screw heads were originally very close to the connector, so the PCB is now on this new one, 23.5 millimeters top to bottom to give more space. So that's the main difference there uh, in terms of sizing. It'll still fit the same thing on the torrent. You don't need like a new case or anything like that. It's just this, th this part changes. There's a version number now. That makes it easy to identify which ones are good and which ones are bad. The plated through holes should be pretty obvious also. But if yours says V1.1, then as far as we understand it right now, you're good, you got the new one. And this is fine, to be very clear. That seems to work well in our testing, so we haven't had any issues with it. And the old one was a problem. For changes for the new one, from what Fractal was telling us, plus some of our own notes here, uh, VCC, or the Voltage Common Collector, the RPM and the PWM main traces are now all on the back side of the PCB. The VCC traces are still wide enough, Fractal says, for three amps total. There's a reason it says this, we'll talk about that. And as for the reason of moving it all to the backside, this is to protect it from screws and from assembly line error. As for that three amp total statement, that's because the 12 volt connection has been reduced from an entire side of the PCB down to a single but thick trace. The front side of the PCB contains small bridges for PWM and RPM to carry them over the VCC trays. The bridges between the front and the back are visible as small pinholes in the PCB. So that walks you through the differences for the most part between new and old. At this point, we're gonna hand it off to Patrick. He'll get the multimeter out, do some quick testing on showing, well, continuity and where a short is possible or hopefully where it's not possible on the new one. And that'll pretty much wrap up if Fractal has resolved things fully on its new fan hubs. Okay, so let's talk about a few of the changes that have been made to the PCB, starting with the plated through holes. Fractal has done this for protection rather than grounding. Uh, you might want to plate a through hole in order to get a connection to ground, but they have specifically avoided, uh, if you zoom in really close, any connection to the ground plane here uh, around the plated through hole. You can see there's actually a gap between this plane and the plating here. They've done that to, uh, according to them, and I quote, avoid the possibility of current traveling through the case if ground wire is disconnected. So they just want to avoid any possibility of current traveling through here at all. So this is just reinforcement. Fractal has also widened these holes versus the original design. And the reason that they've done that is that in the torrent, this hub is partially obscured by a piece of steel. So in the factory, when they're assembling this, uh, the workers have to get an electric screwdriver 
with a screw on it and insert it through the steel side of the case into this hole. And if this isn't aligned perfectly, they can end up jabbing a spinning screw into this lacquer coating here and chipping it. And that's what leads to these scratches like this that short into the case. So um, reinforcing the hole is part of solving that, but widening the hole means that they can have standoffs in the case that have little collars on them so that when the workers are assembling this, this will align onto the collar perfectly and they'll be able to insert the screw perfectly without looking at it. This issue didn't occur in Fractal's uh, older cases that had fan hubs in them because as you can see, this is the uh, uh, this is the Nexus Plus Two. They made a typo on this one; had to sharpie it out. This is a pre-production, but they have standoffs soldered to the PCB itself. So when they are assembling a case like the Meshify Two, all of the workers have to do is take this PCB with the standoffs already soldered to it, put it in the case, and then put the screws into the standoffs. So the screws never touch the PCB and there's never any risk of them chipping the lacquer because standoffs are already aligned. But the major difference is that on the front, this whole thing is a ground plane, whereas on this, it's a 12 volt power plane. One other thing they've done, you'll notice that on the older hub, this is the connection that would go to a motherboard. And we've got labels for the, this is a four pin fan connector. so. Um, starting from pin one, we have ground, 12 volt, RPM, and then PWM. So you can see on the new hub, the only pins that they have marked are PWM and RPM. Uh, that's the control signal and the tachometer signal back from the fan. And the reason that they only have those two hooked up is that they don't want somebody to be able to plug in this uh, motherboard header incorrectly and uh, potentially send 12 volts to the wrong place. So they're just narrowing down the amount of incorrect connections that can be made here. Now, because the pins that would be ground and 12 volt here are not connected on the new one, that means that you can't power this hub via the motherboard connector, but you wouldn't really wanna do that anyway. That's what the SATA connections are for. So this new hub requires the SATA connection for power. We have this hub that was sent to us by a viewer with a nice scratch on the front here. So if I put a probe on this scratch, I can, for example, go to the SATA connection here and touch the 12 volt line and get connection. I can go to the motherboard connection here, um, get connection to 12 volts. And I can go to these fans, pin one is ground, pin two is 12 volts. So for each of these fans, I can get connection to 12 volts. And just to be clear, none of the ground pins, I'm touching ground pins now, none of those have continuity. This whole surface, this is all 12 volts under here. And if any of this lacquer gets scratched, then it will make a connection to 12 volts. And that's, it's just that easy, like you can, do it with a screw pretty easily. On the back of the PCB here, this is all a ground plane. So if I make a scratch anywhere on here, then I should be able to get this pin right here would be a connection to ground. So yeah, this whole side is ground. We have our new PCB here. This is the engineering sample. It's identical to the final product, but I can, for example, uh, let me touch 12 volts here. And if I scratch right here, there's no connection. And if I touch the ground pin now, you can see that the front is a ground plane now. Now, if I go over to this uh, motherboard connection, if I touch this ground pin, can see it's not connected. So this ground pin isn't connected to anything at all. And if I touch this 12 volt pin, this also isn't connected here. It's not connected to 12 volts. It's not connected to ground. 
it's not connected to anything. And ground, not connected to anything. So these two pins are just support now. You can also see that this whole rear, it was a ground plane on the old one, and it should still be on the new one. Yeah, so this is all ground. But these plated through holes, these are not connected to ground. And they're not connected to 12 volt, and they're not connected to anything on the fans. So this is a very simple fan hub, control from the motherboard and power from a SATA connector. It looks like everything's working as intended now, and it's safer than it used to be. So I'll send it back to Steve uh, to close out the video. Back to you, Steve. So last couple of things to talk about here is just how Fractal handled this in general. Fractal did about as good of a job as you can. In the Gigabyte piece, when we did one of our follow-ups, one of the things we said was that every company that makes a product has a very high chance that at some point it's going to make a mistake. And how they handle that is really the problem. So with Fractal, uh, as opposed to some of the other companies we've looked at recently, Fractal not only notified us before we found about it from you all, from someone in our audience emailing us, but it also was very open with us and it shared the story. It didn't try to hide the fact that there was a problem. It didn't avoid using the word hazard when it was appropriate. And so Fractal was very open, but also it was invested in fixing the issue. Fractal kept us updated with emails basically every few days about the progress it was making with third party firms that were looking over the new designs or creating the new designs and the progress it was making with manufacturing. So we reported on this a few times along the way in Hardware News or in the other video we did, but Fractal was updating us so much that it was like we would have had an update video every two days if we kept reporting on it. Uh, most of the updates were small and incremental, but the point is that Fractal maintains very open communication. It pulled, this is the most important, it pulled back the products that it had shipped. Every Fractal's warrant case from what they told us that had not yet sold had been recalled to Fractal to fix the issue. So that's key because it's better than other companies where they might just go, well, oops, well, those are out there now. So anyway, we'll fix it going forward and just hope none of those computers catch on fire. So this was a much better approach to a potentially serious problem. Uh, some small notes. So this, this Nexus hub from previously, one of the other cases Fractal made that I think Patrick talked about this, but Fractal has switched back to the manufacturer for this particular hub. You can find this out by looking up the UL marks on each of these and figure out who the manufacturer is. So this one is from Huizhou Huayang, and they are uh, a manufacturer that did not appear on the new Torrent Hub. So the one before, anyway, the revision. With the revision, it looks like Fractal has come back to that company. The old one looked pretty good from what we could tell. It's, it's fairly advanced. It's got reasonably good design. So Fractal going back to that makes sense. Ultimately for the new one, the big takeaway is that there were far more changes than were necessary to strictly fix the issue. So it's fixed and you get a better fan hub. Uh, if you haven't contacted Fractal yet to get a replacement, again, it seems like the volume of people who actually got a torrent before this was discovered is very low. But if you happen to get one, contact Fractal, get the replacement and uh, d destroy the old one. So I, you really should probably just cut it up and then send it to e-waste recycling or something so that no one accidentally uses it because it is a hazard uh, and that's the problem. But looks good. We're pretty happy with the result. Definitely very happy with how Fractal handled the issue. Um, that would have been the difference if, if this, this could have turned out very differently where we gave the torrent a very strongly positive review. And if we found out about this issue either ourselves uh, because ours eventually got scratched and it shorted, or if a user emailed us and showed us the issue, people are aware of it now because of the H1 stuff. If Fractal didn't take steps to remedy it like it did, what would have happened is we'd be posting a video revoking our review and basically saying, nope, can't trust anyone anymore, never mind, don't buy it. So two very different outcomes here and uh, we're happy with how they handled it. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. We'll see you all next time.